Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Alberonin here again, and today we're going over a breakdown from Makomo. And Makomo is quite an interesting character, and probably why I'm going for a breakdown so late. She's kind of like Shinobu in that she has really low damage, and it's really hard to get a decent chunk of damage with her. And that most of her strengths come in her interesting offense techniques. So, Makomo is what I would call a strike throw character, in that basically her entire game plan revolves around her going for throws and having the opponent try to guess whether she will or won't go for a throw and when she will go for a throw. Like there's a lot of sequences with Makomo where she could basically go for a throw at any point. Um, whether it's after, like if you do a few attacks into this, I can go for a throw there. Whether it's two hits, I can also go, oops. I can go for a throw there. Or I could go two hits into my water wheel and then throw after the water wheel. Or I could cancel the water wheel back into these and it's just a big scary throwing mess and even though they look kind of reactable when you're watching this video, or maybe they don't, but in the online environment her ability to throw grabs in literally anywhere is very scary and they become very very hard to react to especially when the opponent also has to worry about the fact that she can do them in the middle of her combos to get an extra big chunk of damage at the end of her combos so they're always on the lookout for you going for a grab so you have to make the opponent scared of whether or not you will go for a grab because then when you don't you just get a full combo if they're just thinking you go for a grab and they try to run away or mash buttons on you then you just get to attack again and having the opponent scared of these grabs is the main strength of Makomo. Okay, so now let's get into the actual breakdown business. Her regular attack string is actually really unique, and I usually don't say that about regular attack strings, but hers is super unique. So the first attack is the only normal part about it. As soon as you press two buttons, she does this extra whole sequence where she like does two hits, jumps into the air, and then kicks you and jumps back. But if you press any more buttons, that kick actually turns into a rapid kick. And if you press any more buttons, and she comes back onto the ground, turns into a Beyblade, and spins around a ton. Now this attack string is really, really weird, because, well, it puts her in the air, so when she does moves, she... What? <laughs> so when she does her attack string, she's put in the air, so she can't do moves that she can't do in the air. So like, her guard special, she can't do that in most of her attack string. She can't do her ultimate in most of her attack string, which does prove to be quite a problem sometimes. But it does mean that she can do the aerial version of her water surface slash, which we'll talk about when we get to it, but it is a lot better because it recovers a lot faster because she falls to the ground and instantly recovers. So the fact that she's in the air for a bunch of her attack string leads to a lot of useful and not useful things. Um, but yeah, the in main interesting thing, not only does it put her into the air, but it's also different depending on how many buttons you press, because if you only press the button twice, she does this kickback, which as you'll notice, she doesn't do in the combo if you do the full thing, she just does these rapid kicks into the Beyblade. But having just those two buttons where she does that kickback is actually really, really useful. There's no other attack like it in the game where you just do two attacks and jump back within the one attack. Usually you'd have to sidestep to jump away during an attack and do something like this. But she just does that for free. And that can be really, really scary and lead into a really interesting, you know, light-footed strike throw game. Because, like, she can do a few attacks and then go in for a throw if you're near a corner it works a lot more consistently. Or, like, you might just have to do a step forward into a throw. And the opponent probably isn't expecting that. And, equally, you can just do a step forward into more attacks. Whoops. And just do this over and over again. And whenever you hit confirm it, it's very easy to hit confirm, because you only have to press the button twice, like, I'm done now. So, tap tap. And she does this whole sequence, so it's super easy to hit confirm, so I can go tap tap. Oh, I'm hitting the opponent. I just reacted to it. So you can really easily hit confirm and get combos going, like, confirmed from it. So it's really, really powerful. And on block as well, because she does the jump back. So she always has the ability just to, like, jump away, and it makes her attack string very safe. Because usually attack strings can be kind of unsafe, even if you whiff it in neutral. Like, she just does a few attacks and then jumps backwards, so she dodges the opponent's attempt to punish. It's really, really cool. And on block, not only is there the aspect of going in for a, um, a grab on block, or just going in for strikes, you know, reinforcing her strike throw game, 
She can also at any point, if the opponent is trying to just like dash away or get out of there because they don't want to be part of your strike throw, at any point during her flying backwards, you can cancel into a water wheel or a water slash or surface slash, whatever it is, and catch the opponent trying to run away. So it's a really, really powerful just in the first two hits of her attack sequence. And then afterwards, she just sees these rapid kicks in the air and they're not too useful and then at this point you're just doing the whole attack string for some more damage. Um, that was a lot, just about an attack string, but it's pretty interesting. Her up attack string is kind of interesting because it takes her back down to the ground, where it usually puts, in a po um, puts you in the air, but for her it puts you back onto the ground so you can do your ground special moves, which can be handy if you're wanting to combo into your ultimate more quickly. Like if you don't have time to do the full blade blade, I'm pretty sure you can combo into your ultimate from this. Yeah. That's a bit more consistent way if you don't have the, you know, the time to do that whole spinning Beyblade thing. And the downwards version, she just does a big chop on the head. It does some okay damage, but I don't find myself using it too often. Her aerial attacks are actually really good because they actually lower her down to the ground, as you can see. It kind of like pulls her downwards as she attacks them. So they're actually pretty consistent on hitting the opponent. And she's kind of like Shinobu in that she has a horizontal air dash. She doesn't some characters, like maybe Sabito, see how he jumps and like it pushes him down to the ground. Zenitsu, in particular, gets pushed down to the ground. But she goes horizontally, so she can travel in the air a lot more. So she's a lot more likely to land her aerial attack. And she can get full combos off of it, whether it's just the first hit. Or obviously she can do the follow-up to get a free pop-up. And then from the free pop-up, she can get, you know, like a free dash in and get some kind of combo going like this. Uh, this is just an example combo. But it's pretty useful. It's a it's a really decent. It has a good like horizontal hitbox and even at the peak of your jump you can be able to hit the opponent with all of the hits. So it's like one of the best jumping special jumping attacks because it'll just hit them as long as you're within range, it'll hit them. And it has really good range as well. Look, it nearly hits him here. And uh, yeah, one of the best aerial attack strings in the game. Her aerial tilt attack is also really, really good. Uh, it does start a red combo, unlike Shinobu. And it isn't like plus on block, like the opponent... You can't mash before the opponent, it's not advantageous. You have to just block or call out a support to cover you. Um, but other than that, it does have a really good hitbox with those, like, four slashes going in front of you. So it is really, really good at hitting opponent even really late into the attack. So, yeah, definitely one of the better aerial tilt attacks. Her ground tilt attack, her armor attack, has pretty decent range. Um, nothing extraordinary, but it's good that she does that big swing with her sword. So it kind of hits in a little bit of a um, angle around in front of her, which is really good. So even if the opponent is walking sideways, there's a chance that it'll hit. And um, apart from that, it's a pretty average. Average speed and pretty average charge up time. Maybe a little bit below average. Her grab is a little bit better than normal. The hitbox is, you know, a bit extended by her sword, so it has a little bit of a disjointed hitbox, so that's handy. And it does about average damage. Nothing ridiculous, but also at least it's not tiny. And it's got a decent hitbox, which is really important, especially when you're considering how many times you're going to be going for a throw with this character, because that's her entire game plan. Okay, and that's all of her regular attacks, I'm pretty sure. And just a quick note on her movement, her dash speed is actually really fast. It's almost up there with Akaza, how quickly she goes in. And her aerial sidestep is really, really good. As I said, she's got a horizontal sidestep, which makes her... And it's quite floaty as well, so she has... Lots of opportunities for dashing in and going in for her aerial attacks to get a combo started that way, which is really, really powerful. Okay. Okay, yep, yeah, now for her specials. So, her special one is Water Surfer Slash. And this is just, seems like a very simple special move, but it actually has a lot of applications. So if you just press the button once, it just does a little bit of damage and a single slash, but you can press the button twice and the opponent will get knocked back They'll flip up even if they um, recover quickly, or they'll get sent to a hard knockdown, but not for very long. And this is just a, her main damage special move if she does the two hits, because that's you know, 11,000 damage for Makomo is pretty good, unfortunately. Not 11,000, 1,000, jeez. 1,100. 
Um, but a lot of the time, if you want to get good damage, you're going to be doing two slashes into the water wheel, into two slashes into the water wheel, until the slash or something, and then going for a reset. And that's where most of our damage comes through. So that's the main use of both the slashes. But on the first slash, she actually recovers really quickly. So you can do a single slash and then go for either buttons, and you can extend combos using it. And use it as a combo extender if you'd like. However, because it doesn't do that much damage, you're not going to get a huge amount of damage if you just use it as a combo extender. Like even if I just do this and like a down combo, see, you're not getting too much from it. Um, but yes, where it becomes more useful is as a combo ender, particularly in the air. Because see how quickly I recover here and how quickly I'm blocking afterwards? As soon as I'm blocking, I can grab. So even while those water particles are on the screen, I can be going for my grab, she recovers that quickly. And where it becomes scary is, well, not particularly on hit, because it's really hard to react to on hit. Where it, on block, where it is a little bit easier to react to, because, you know, they're blocking already, they're ready to dodge your things. So getting grabbed here is less likely. But, because she has a second hit, it's a bit of a gamble as to whether she'll just do one hit and then go in for the grab, or whether she'll do two hits. And then if they get hit by the second hit, that she can cancel it into her water wheel, and then it's just a big mess for the opponent. And also, of course, she can just grab after the second hit, because it recovers quite fast as well. And then after the second hit, there's also the option that you can cancel into your water wheel, which is also advantageous on block, and you can loop it over and over and over again. And when you're in the air, it just becomes even more scary, because she recovers so quickly in the air. Basically impossible to react to online. So yeah, Water Surface Slash is a really good special move, and when you do both slashes, that's going to be your main damaging component of your combos. So now for her Tilt Special. This is her Water Wheel, and it's actually a really, really different type of Water Wheel to any of the others in the game. I know all the Water Wheels are slightly different, but hers is the most unique. Mainly, because it starts off not as a water wheel, and it goes so far. So it kind of reminds me of the Mortal Kombat Kano Ball. She's just rolling towards the opponent, and then when she hits them, then she does the water wheel on top of them, and then they get bounced. And from the water wheel, she can actually dash up for free to get an aerial portion of her combo going, which can be really handy. And yeah, it's just an awesome combo starter. It is basically everything you would want from a really far-reaching water wheel. It's advantageous on block. It leaves her in the air, which is where she gets her, you know, crazy mix-ups. Like, if I've entered my whole combo in something like this, I can get some crazy mix-ups with my grabs. And, well, yeah, it also just reaches, like, the full screen. So if the opponent does something punishable, like, from all the way over there, they accidentally do an armor attack or something, or they try to dash in, or just, if they're doing literally anything, you can, like, dodge it and dash in with your water wheel. And it's the exact same in the air. So if you dodge anything with your awesome dash, you can dash back in with your water wheel to punish it, and get some good damage for it. And leaving her airborne, as we said, is really important, because then she's in the air and she can do her aerial water slash, which is a lot better for her grabs. That's basically it for the water wheel. Um, I'll just show that it can also be useful in pressure, because it's actually advantageous on block, and even if the opponent does manage to squeeze it out in the armor attack, you have time to like see it and then go for a sidestep and if the opponent does have really quick attacks and they can beat you pressing your attacks because I think some of the faster attacks in the game can beat it obviously you can just cancel it into your water surface slash and you can put your water surface slash into a grab all sorts of fancy stuff or you can just do all two hits of the water surface slash there's, there's endless options <laughs> now for her guard special it is actually a pretty pretty good guard special so it is actually invincible and it reaches really really far like nearly full screen away if she is too far away she will just stop like here she just stops um but it reaches really really far for considering that she's running in completely invincible here unlike this run she's totally invincible until she hits the opponent and then she can combo off of it by you know cancelling into a water wheel And going in for a reset, she can get so much damage off of this, and it's her invincible reversal, so no matter how far the opponent is away, if you can armor through it, you're gonna hit them for it. If they, if it's someone like a uh, Yahaba, 
or any kind of zona, and you can go through their projectiles. Invincibles strike through them, and you get to start. And you get to start a yellow combo. I didn't even realize how awesome that was. So not only is it like a full screen invincible move that starts combos, which is already amazing, it starts a yellow combo. But of course, to balance it out, it is very, very unsafe. You can't call any supports or anything until you're basically punished and dying already. So you do have to be wary about when you use it, but it is an amazing special move. It actually has so much pop-up that you can combo it into itself a few times. So that is all of Makomo's regular attacks. We can quickly show her ultimate activation, just so you know how far she's reaching. The answer is not very far. It's probably one of the worst ultimate activations in the game, especially considering it doesn't combo off of a lot of situations you would want it to. So you can't combo off of this. You can combo for the first hit, luckily. You can't combo off of her water wheel because she's in the air and has to land on the ground. She can't combo off of most of her attack string because she's in the air until she lands back here, but that's not going to combo. She can't combo when she's doing the rapid kicks. She has to wait until she's done this whole Beyblade situation until she can go for her ultimate. And that is why sometimes you'll want to go for your up combo, because that's just a little bit faster and you have a little bit more time to cancel into your ultimate before your combo ends. So uh, with Makomo, you're really not often going to have the opportunity to be like, oh, let me just quickly go into my ultimate suddenly, because she's never really on the ground or in a position to cancel into her ultimate. It's only ever if she like intentionally starts a combo or does a combo to go into it where she just does a single hit. Even that can be really hard because you have to do like a hit into a slash and then try and get it to work that way. But that's a tricky juggle and you don't want to be doing tricky stuff in a bad connection. So a lot of the time with Makomo I end up just going for boosts and stuff because she can use a lot of meter in her combos to get a lot of damage. She's a character that does like to cash out. So being able to go for boosts and then do boost combos because the boost combo ender is, you know, quite handy because it's quite a long knockdown. And she can build a lot of meter back during it. It doesn't do much damage, but she's standing there for ages and can build back lots and lots of meter before. Look how long Sabito was lying on the ground there, jeez. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going for boosts more than ultimates whenever I use Makumo. Okay, so now that we're done with all of her, her buttons and special moves, let's talk about combos. So... Makomo is an interesting combo character because she kind of doesn't really get much damage from doing a generic combo, so there's not really one bread and butter combo I can recommend doing with her. I guess something that's really good is just practicing your combos off of the two hit hit confirm. So if I just practice the button twice and it's the four hits, I practice seeing like, okay, that hit, and then I can cancel into my um, water wheel, and I can dash up for free and do a few hits off of that, and then, oops. Sometimes that misses, awkwardly, but then I can go into my Water Slash. And I can go for a reset there. If I want to put a little bit more damage into the combo, maybe I can do something like this. Or, uh... I can head onto my Water Slashes first, and then do the combo. That does 3,000 damage plus the grab, so that's a big chunk of damage for a single combo and a reset. So I guess that stuff like that can be a B and B, but really, when you're playing with Makomo, you kind of have to switch it up as much as you can so that you don't get too predictable. Because when you strike throwing, you can't be predictable because then the opponent knows when you're going to strike and knows when you're going to throw. So sometimes, like with Makomo, I just like doing a few hits into the water surface slash and then into the grab, just for no reason during my combo. I did have a lot more combo time, but it's just really good to keep the opponent on their toes and not know exactly when you're going to do things. Um... An important thing to note though is it's important to know what combos to do when you want to build meter. So basically just do anything and end in a water wheel and that will give you a lot of time to build back some meter with a hard knockdown from it. Um, yeah. So no matter how long your combos are, if you just do some water slashes into water wheel and then end in a single water surface slash, you'll both be restood. And depending on the height of each character, it can become a better or worse reset. So in situations like this, I think we can get a kind of good one here. Like if you were in this situation where Sabito falls down after me, that is a really really good grab reset and practically impossible to avoid. So basically you just want to be doing any combination of 
combination of water wheel into water surface slash um, and however much meter you feel like spending. So like maybe if I really feel like cashing out with Malcomo, I can do stuff like this. Oh, and try not miss. That does happen. An unfortunate loss with a uh, unfortunate lot with Makomo. So you do have to be careful about that. Like even just then, just doing special moves into special moves, she can miss awkwardly. But yeah, see, like that one there. Subito just fell to the ground and he got grabbed, so that was practically unavoidable. Okay, um, she's getting a combo off of a tilt attack. I think you can do, like, just a few hits until she's doing the rapid kicks in the air. And then go for a water surface slash into the reset. Or, what I prefer to do is actually use this as a good opportunity to really spend a lot of meter and go for something like this. Um, so after a tilt attack, I like to go a few hits, surface slash, water wheel into... Whoops. You need to be a little bit quick. And the corner can mess you up. A lot of things can mess you up with Makomo. Hello? So that reset- oh! oh I was too quick that time. But 3700 damage and then add the grab on the top. I'm sure you know what was coming. So that's a lot of damage from a single armor attack. And the same goes off of your aerial tilt attack. You do have to be a little bit faster than that. If it does become too hard, you can just do straight into the special moves, and that becomes a little bit easier, but you just lose a tiny bit of damage from it. And if you don't feel like spending meter, obviously, you know, you can do stuff like this, which is less damage, but a similar concept. Or, of course, it's also important that sometimes if you realize you have, like, no meter, just go for a water wheel to end the combo so that you can build a bunch of meter during the knockdown. <laughs> Um, where she's really going to get some juicy damage is when you land your raw water wheels, and then you can do something like this. So you do that, then you dash in. So 3,500 damage for four bars for her is actually really good. And of course you don't have to make it as long as that if you don't want to. You could just, you know, make it a lot cheaper and go like this. But, uh, you know, the more special moves, the more damage. That's basically it with Malcomo. She's not going to get particularly grand damage by doing some special combo. It's really just how much meter do you want to spend for how much damage? Like, how much damage do you want and how much meter are you willing to spend on this combo? And Marcos and Mo is a character that I kind of really spend a lot more meter than I usually do with other characters. Because going for all these grabs makes the opponent really scared. So they end up just getting hit by stupid little stuff like dashing in and sidestepping and random stuff and going for little resets like this. They're scared of a grab and they get hit again and then they get hit again. So even though you're spending a lot of meter on a lot of your stuff, you get a lot, a lot of random free damage from the opponent just acting stupid because they're terrified of you. <laughs> so in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. Um, I think that's literally all the combos we have to talk about. If you want to combo into your ultimate, uh, as I said, it's a little bit tricky. So... <laughs> Literally, all I can recommend is doing something like this. Like, that'll be some okay damage. But really, if you want to use an ultimate with Makomo, I seriously just recommend using it as a counter for the opponent's attacks, because that'll get way more damage, and it'll be a lot easier than trying to do a combo into it. Because, like, even that there, that did really awful damage, and anything else I would have done would have had to been, like, a single hit into it, and that doesn't even combo, but, like, a single hit into this, into that to get it to combo. It's it's pretty tricky. Um. Oh yeah, when she's in search mode, I bet you can guess what kind of combos she's going to be doing. And it uh, looks something like this. <laughs> and then you can go for a reset at the end there and get tons of damage. Your opponent's basically dead if they get hit once. Because I'm sure by the time you've gone into search mode, they've lost a little bit of life, and by the time they've lost that life, they're totally dead by your combo that you did in surge mode. And apart from 
that, I think that is literally all there is to talk about Makomo's combos. She's not a combo-heavy character, despite the fact that she can combo very easily. Like, I can get a combo from this and dash up for free, but, um, like, there's nothing particularly interesting I'm gonna do here. I can do whatever I want. I can do any number of hits and then cancel into a Water Surfer Slash and go for a grab. And if you want to just really end your combo with damage, like, if you're about to kill them, then yeah, I super do recommend just not going for reset, maybe just guaranteeing the damage and... Doing something like this. Like that, that's a decently okay chunk of damage. <laughs> and if you're getting a combo off of this, I don't think I mentioned, but you can just cancel into Water Wheel. So, of course, we're going to be doing more combos like this. Oh, and uh, yeah, that was intentional. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's literally Makomo and her combos. You can throw in supports into combos if you feel like you need the extra damage. But I feel like if you're doing your resets properly, using supports are a lot more useful for um, saving the supports to cover yourself when you do things. Like if you do a raw water wheel and you want to bring out a support to like make it more advantageous on block and you can go for more grabs and stuff, I think supports are a lot more useful in that way for Makomo. Unlike Shinobu, who really likes having supports for her combos. Makomo really likes them for saving her from dying and for making her offense just even stronger. So. That is Makomo. I think that is all I have to say about her. She's a really interesting character, a really fun character. She plays the game a lot differently to a lot of other characters with her interesting strings with her strike throws, being able to just do completely random combos, and I love seeing how terrified the opponent gets when you just start doing such random things with her, like just ending your combo short and going for a grab for no reason, like you had a lot more combo time, but you just scared them by going for extra stuff. Like, oop, grab, and then they get terrified, and they, like, do random jumping things, and then, then when they're jumping around, you can hit them with a water wheel, and then get a whole fresh combo. She's a crazy character, and you can really pay her crazy. She's got awesome movement, she's got ridiculous movement, like, that is just YOLO with the water wheel, and then she's got good damage, resets, and mix-ups. Oh, oop, shouldn't say damage, take that one out. She's got good resets and mix-ups to make up for her low damage. But, that is Makomo, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown for her, and I seriously just suggest you try her out and I hope you have fun. Anyways, thanks for watching this breakdown. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.